For this video I'm going to illustrate the process I go through to reproduce historical ironwork. In this instance I'm looking to reproduce an Anglo-Saxon weaving sword. The Anglo-Saxons were quite proficient at weaving and produced many beautiful patterns, with the women of the household producing cloth either for family use or for resale. I don't want to get into the weaving techniques because I'm primarily a blacksmith and not a weaver. However, to illustrate what I'm going to make, I want to give an overview of the techniques they used. The weaving would have been done on a large loom, which would have either stood freestanding in the floor or leant up against a wall. The threads would have been held tight under tension by stones at the bottom. These loom stones are quite often found during the excavation of domestic areas. Where the two are woven together, the weaving sword will be used to pat down the horizontal threads to hold them tight together and produce the cloth. The weaving sword which I'm going to reproduce was excavated at the Buckland Anglo-Saxon Cemetery in Dover. The information can be found in the book of this name, written by Vera Iverson. The weaving sword itself was excavated from grave 46. Using the archaeological illustration published in the book at a quarter scale, I was able to lift the dimensions of the piece directly from the drawing. Although plain iron weaving swords have been found in Britain, many were pattern welded. Given the layout of the pattern welding, it is likely that they were made as such, rather than the weaving swords being made from broken or shortened real swords. The weaving sword I'm reproducing was pattern welded. However, the only information I have available with regards to this is in Vera Everson's book, stating that it was a four-bar standard pattern. I can't afford to commission a survey looking at the exact pattern of this weaving sword, so I started off by designing my own pattern, which I thought would be appropriate for the Anglo-Saxon period. However, after completing the drawing and filming this video, I came across other information. In her publication, The Anglo-Saxon Cemetery at Fingalsham, Kent, A Reconsideration, Sonia E. Chadwick has two illustrations representing the pattern welds X-radiographed in two weaving swords. These pattern welds are quite simple. The first one, like at the Dover Buckland Cemetery, has four bars. Each of these bars is twisted and the twists are alternated to form a double chevron pattern. The second one has alternative straight layers and twists. The twists are also piled in chevrons, but there are only three bars. However, I want to use four bars, like in the Dover Buckland weaving sword so I might make a combination of the two. For larger projects I do tend to go through quite a strenuous drawing process just to be sure that my client is getting exactly what it is they're after. Drawings are also very useful for presenting new ideas or making suggestions to clients. For personal projects like this one I don't always do drawings and quite often just work from images, dimensions and records. For archaeological reconstructions a drawing is quite useful as quite often there will be no surviving examples of the object you are reproducing. Therefore a carefully researched drawing is critical to the production of an accurate replica. So for those of you who were brave enough to stick through the first boring half of this video, uh, this is the actual drawing bit, which I'm sure you probably clicked on um, the thumbnail for this video to actually watch, rather than me waffling on about my research. Uh, so I'm using an architect's table, um, and I'm using A2 150 gram per square metre paper. Mainly because I'm too much of a cheapskate to buy A1 paper or heavier paper, which would be much better. But for the purpose of this, this is perfectly suitable. Uh, the, architect's the architect's table is pretty indispensable for the kind of drawings that I do, uh, technical drawings and that. Um, because it allows me to work quite quickly and quite accurately. As you can see I've drawn a centre line down the middle and then using the centre slide I will mark off points to delineate a rectangle and within this rectangle the entire weaving sword should fit. Uh, so then I'll go along the length and mark uh, all the main points such as where the tapers start and end, where the tang starts and end starts and ends um, and all those key points uh, and then it's a question of linking them together so this is the reasonably easy bit um, like I said before all these dimensions have been lifted off um, the archaeological drawing from um, Mrs Everson's book um, There is a 
taper along the length of this blade, which is quite interesting because most regular swords from this period were parallel sided. Um, here I'm using uh, a set of French curves to mark um, the point at the end of the weaving sword. Uh, and the weaving swords are quite interesting because they have this funny little round protrusion at the end, which I'm not 100% sure what the purpose was for. Um, in my mind it could be to make it easy to fit between threads, possibly, or possibly to demarcate it from a real sword or a live blade. Um, these circle stencils are quite good, they're a lot more practical than using a compass, and they just allow you to put a circle of the right diameter in uh, the drawing. So here I'm marking off uh, the bars of the pattern welded core. Um, also, like I said before, I did this design for the pattern welding before actually having found what a, what the pattern on a proper weaving sword would have been like. So just came up with a design here that I liked, and it's not actually going to be the one that I use when I produce this weaving tool in the next few weeks. French curves again. So now I'm moving on to ink pens. And these were Christmas presents of my lovely girlfriend. Um, I tend to build a scaffolding in pencil uh, on all my drawings and then I will ink them in afterwards yeah, once I know that the scaffolding is accurate and within specified dimensions. Uh, I use a fine inking pen to demarcate the outside and then we'll get onto the shading afterwards with a thicker pen. So again I'm going through the whole rigmarole of using the circles and the curves and occasionally I'll get lazy and wing it and do it by hand, like so. And uh, there I am painting it like one of my French curves. And you can see that it already makes the image a lot clearer. And there I am winging it again. That will be the squash section of the pattern welding which will get forged down into a tang and it always crushes the end of it so it is quite important to have an eye for that kind of detail if possible uh, I mean you'll soon learn if you do a drawing and it doesn't look quite right you'll soon figure out why not and then uh, begins the boring part of um, drawing in the pattern, which I may actually speed up a little bit more than I already have done. Oh yeah, first I mark out where all the twists are to try and accurately represent them on the drawing. And again, the sliding centre bar is quite useful for the right angles. Oh, looks like I made a mistake and rubbed it out quickly. Nobody will know. You can see now it's slightly later in the evening, hence the lack of light. Penciling in where the twists are going to be. May end up cutting this bit out actually. And then starts a long and tedious process of inking in the pattern welding, which I used a slightly thicker pen for. I've never actually drawn pattern welding before. Um, I've certainly never had to draw it for anybody, uh, but bugger me it was boring and it's probably even more boring for you guys to watch so I'll probably shorten this clip. I did a few tests on my notepad before starting this just to see if I could, or just to make sure that I got the pattern right. But I'm carefully inking in the untwisted sections. 
No. A lot of modern day pattern welding reconstructions have quite a few layers in, but if you look at the Anglo-Saxon originals, a lot of the time they didn't actually have that many layers. They'd have a layer count of maybe six, seven, maybe twelve layers at the most. Um, they were quite quite rough by modern standards. Um, I mean, some of it was absolutely marvellous pattern welding to look at. A lot of the bog standard pattern welding would have been quite crude, uh, with not much effort made to ensure that uh, the layers ran parallel to each other and didn't overlap and all that. That's a fairly, fairly modern thing. Back in those days they would have been used to trees and rocks and straight lines would have been quite a rare thing to see so they wouldn't have really thought any different. Obviously you want a straight edge on your sword. This wobbly sword is no use to man nor beast. Except if you're an Aztec. In which case it's made of stone. With a bit of wood in the middle. It's rubbish. It'd rather be an Anglo-Saxon with a metal sword. Even it's a weaving sword. I'm waffling on a bit, but... Trying to make this video more... Oh, look, I've started on the shading. That's something interesting, finally. So I um, got a slightly wider pen and just went and figured out which edge would be shaded. So basically, if the light is coming from the bottom of the screen, then the part of the drawing which is towards the top of the screen will be in the shade. So I've thickened that line with a thicker pen to give the impression of shading. Um, and then with a wider wider grey pen I uh, just darkened the edge to have a kind of running away effect with the shade well shading basically that's what shading is it's dark where things get darker and light where things get lighter but that's of any use I hope nobody thought this was going to be an instructor instructional video with anything useful in it um, and I'm just drawing in a cross section for the blade so that I know what kind of shape to make it. So, To help the pattern I'm probably going to grind it to that concave shape. But There we go. Finished drawing. Not one of my best but it'll do. And I uh, hope some of you learned something. Uh, thanks for watching the video. We'll see when I start making the weaving sword. Thanks for watching. Bye.